uh, friends. Uh, it's indeed an um, uh, occasion to celebrate, uh, celebrate the journey which has been made, the, made by the pioneers of antimicrobial stewardship programs across the globe. Uh, if you look at the dictionary meaning of stewardship, it, is, it means the conducting and supervising of managing of something, especially the careful and responsible uh, management of something entrusted to one's care. However, stewardship can also be defined as donating money to, for the good of the society or the church. Now, stewardship, that's why so aptly can be equated to learning to give. Give back to our own patients, of our hospital patients. The, for them, we survive, the healthcare professionals survive. I can remember my mentor, Dr. Tupil Venkat has told one day that whatever we do, whatever we gain, everything because of the patients we serve. So that is why today in this workshop, we will learn in true sense from the starts of the subject to help clinicians and quality professionals across the country and beyond the country to improve clinical outcomes and minimize harms by improving antibiotic prescription and management of restricted antibiotic use. Saying so, today we'll have one of the icon of our generation, the man who started his infectious disease and internal medicine career since 1993, the man who founded the International Nosocomial Infection Control Consortium INICC. And nobody will, will be having any different opinion with me that if today we look after antimicrobial resistance program scientifically, statistically, that was done by INICC. Nearly more than 50 countries where 2000 researchers were there they contributed to the study and this entire study across the globe was handled by no other than Dr. Victor Rosenthal. Sir has accepted our invitation to become our chief guest of this workshop. This is indeed our fortune. I can only remember that the day he got around 750 hospitals from Southeast Asia. He was elated to announce. Now Southeast Asia is also not far behind. I can remember his relentless approach to all the hospitals of Southeast Asia, including India, to participate for participation in the INICC program. He has many qualities. So many hospitals is associated across the globe starting from Argentina, UK and US. He is the board member of CDC, WHO, Ministry of Health of Hong Kong, Taiwan, Colombia, Argentina, Italy, what not. He has reviewed many journals. He has been editor of many journals on infection control as well as internal medicine. And he has written several chapters of several textbooks. We are indeed privileged to have Dr. Viz Victor Rosenthal to be our chief guest today and who will talk about global perspective of antimicrobial stewardship. Sir, over to you. Thank you for this kind introduction. Thank you for inviting me to share information with you. And thank you to all the people who is attending this session. Okay, I will speak with you about global perspective on antimicrobial stewardship. Okay, just as a definition, the implementation of antimicrobial stewardship programs is a strategy to address the problem of antimicrobial resistance by improving the quality of antimicrobial use. Uh, although the benefits of antibiotic use is very clear, misuse and overuse of antibiotics lead to antibiotic resistance. Patients with infections caused by resistant bacteria 
have poor outcomes, many times they die, and also they use more resources. Of all antibiotics prescribed in acute care hospitals, around half are unnecessary or inappropriate. Example of unnecessary is treating viral infection or a long prophylaxis, and inappropriate is sometimes not adjusted to the culture. The primary goal of antimicrobial stewardship is to improve clinical outcomes, ensure cost effectiveness of the therapy, reducing consequences of antimicrobial use, such like toxic effects and emergence of resistance, which is the biggest problem. I was lucky to find two good meta-analyses published five years ago. Uh, both meta-analyses were very good. Uh, one of them published in Lancet, and the other one uh, published in Antimicrobial Agents and Chemotherapy. I will share with you some of the uh, most important data of these uh, papers. Uh, the first of them, the one published in Lancet by Schutz, say that there are nine main strategies to uh, conduct a good stewardship of endometriosis. Uh, one of them is the empirical therapy according to the guidelines, which is basically uh, a national guideline or the guideline of one society, like the Society of Regenerative Biology or the Indian Society. De-escalation of therapy based on culture and when we speak about this, we are speaking about uh, taking a culture, then started with empirical treatment, and then two or three days after, when we have the culture, switch to the antibiotic who is identified as useful according to the culture. Switch from IV to oral therapy. This continuation of empirical treatment based on no evidence of infection, adjustment of therapy according to the renal function, Therapeutic drug monitoring, presence of a local guide, we mean hospital guide, list of restricted antibiotics, and bedside consultation, which is consultation with one ID doctor, infectious disease. Regarding empirical therapy according to the guidelines, uh, the author found that doing that, the mortality was reduced by 35%, and the length of stay was found in 71% of all the 24 publications. The escalation of therapy based on the culture. As I said before, uh, when you are approaching a patient with a suspicion of infection, the first step always is to take the culture, mainly from the blood and from the source of infection. Like, for example, if you have one osteomyelitis, you take a, a sample from the wound using a needle and a syringe and not a swab, because the swab will obtain a contaminated sample, and also from the blood. Or if you have a UTI, united infection, you take a urine culture plus a blood culture, and if you have a pneumonia, you have a bronchoabral lavage plus a blood culture. And then you start with empirical treatment based on the guidelines could be the guideline of the country, the society, of the one of your hospital, but should be one guideline there available. And then after two or three days, when you have the microorganism identified, you switch to this antibiotic according to the result of the culture. And we call this de-escalation of therapy based on culture. By doing that, the mortality reduction was 66%, 90% length of stay reduction, and 95% cost savings. And this is, for me, one of the main recommendations for intermediate stewardship. Switch from IV to oral therapy. Usually, uh, when we are a doctor in charge of a patient, we are afraid that switching from IV to oral may create an issue, a challenge for the patient, because we suspect that the IV therapy is more effective than the oral therapy. But this is not true. Uh, of course, when the patient is in coma and cannot take the medication orally, we don't have any option that provided the drug IV. 
But when the patient can't stay orally the drug, it's better to change. And uh, according to this meta-analysis published in Lancet, there is no impact on mortality. Of all the studies, 64% show cure or resolution, and also show reduction in length of stay and cost. Another one is also something that we are very afraid to do, is when we start with empirical treatment, and then we discover that the patient has no infection, we usually are afraid to stop the treatment. But we should not be afraid, because if we have evidence that the patient has no infection, we shall stop the treatment. And this uh, strategy has no effect, effect on mortality. Also, there was a reduction in length of stay, cost, and of course, bacterial resistance. Regarding adjustment of therapy according to renal function, one study notes mortality reduction, 60% of the studies reduction of adverse events, and 80% of the studies cost savings. Therapeutic drug monitoring, which is very expensive, was especially effective to reduce toxicity of the kidney, nephrotoxicity. Uh, no important effect on mortality, reduce the length of stay and cost savings. But the main outcome is that reduce the toxicity of the kidney. Sometimes, as I said at the beginning, you have a local guideline. I think that this is paramount. I think that this is something you must have. Why is that? Because it's not the same the microorganism profile a bacterial resistance of your hospital than the hospital of your neighbor or the hospital of other cities or the hospital of other countries. You must have your local guide adapting the recommendation of your country. Why is that? Because you have your specific microorganism profile in bacterial resistance. And then you need to have one uh, empirical treatment for your healthcare acquired blasphemy infections in coronary, another recommendation for the healthcare acquired blasphemy infection in medical surgical ICU, another one for orthopedic, another one for pneumonia. You need to have this information because this is uh, tailored by your situation in your particular unit. According to this study in, in France, let me share with you that I, I was shocked knowing that in this uh, meta-analysis they could find only one study showing that, because this is one of the most important things. Have your local guide according to the local microorganisms. And they found that the mortality was reduced in community acquired infections, nosocomial infection, and post-operative intra-abdominal infections. List of restricted antibiotics. What is this? It's a, a list of antibiotics like, for example, imipenem, meropenem, vancomycin, that should be authorized by the specialist. This uh, had uh, an effect in 80% of the studies, reducing the length of stay, and in 91% of the studies, reducing cost, rate of resistance, and in overall, it was effective. Bedside consultation, which is basically having one ID doctor and asking him to go to see the patient. This, uh, in general, didn't have an effect on mortality, but reduced significantly in the case of the mortality of uh, staph aureus bacterium infection. And in 33% uh, of the studies, reduced the length of stay, and in 66, increased the length of stay. One of them increased the cost, and another one reduced the cost. This is another meta-analysis. This one was published also five years ago, but in another journal, and in Tangerial Agents and Chemotherapy. And in this study, we found that they reduced applying the stewardship 81% of the use of antibiotics, 61% uh, in ICU, 88% in general war. Also, they reduced 63% the use of restricted antimicrobial products, and they reduced 91% the length of stay. They reduced 66% the cost of the drugs. 
the MSA was reduced very significantly, as well as imipenem resist pseudomonas and ESBL Klebsiella, but didn't have significant effect in ESBL E. coli and C. diffusion. Other key interventions that I am also surprised were not included in this meta-analysis is to remark and to insist that doctors must take cultures before starting antibiotics. This is key, this is paramount, this is one of the most important things. Because if you provide antibiotics before you take the cultures, you have a very high chance of, have, of having negative cultures and then not knowing what the patient has. Avoid use of antibiotics in viral infections. This applies mainly for community acquired infections. I mean, uh, you are a doctor at your office, you receive a patient with a flu, which is a viral infection, and you prescribe amoxicillin. This is extremely wrong. This is something we must stop. Do not provide antibiotics to the patient without prescription. The patient cannot go to the pharmacy and say to the pharmacist, you know, I have some uh, sore throat and I want to, to, to have an antibiotic. And the pharmacist can never provide the drug. You know, I am a specialist in infectious disease. I was fellow of infectious disease in Argentina and also in Madison, Wisconsin, in the US. And something I found is that the most important weapon to reduce bacterial resistance, and please don't laugh, is not having infections. Because if you don't have the infection, you don't have bacterial resistance, of course. And what is the most effective way to have less infections? Is the infection prevention. That's why since 1993, I dedicated my life to infection prevention, focus on healthcare acquired infections. Another recommendation, which is something that we need to insist a lot, is to use antiviral prophylaxis only when it's necessary and only with the drug indicated for this location. For, this, for example, if you are speaking about orthopedic procedure, we need to use cefazolin or cefalotin. And the same applies for almost all the procedure. Of course, there are exceptions. If you are, uh, if you have a patient that was at your hospital during 30 days and you will perform one surgical procedure, of course, you need to switch to one drug according to your bacterial system. But if the patient is ambulatory, if the patient is coming from the home, cefazolin, cefalotin, is the best option. I am not aware if in India cefazolin is available, but cefalotin is another good option as well. Of course, the exception for that is the intra-abdominal procedures. Uh, in all cases, it should be one dose, one dose. Maybe one day, but not beyond that, because beyond that, you obtain no benefit. One exception for the number of days is the open heart procedure. In those cases, you shall continue till you have the drain, which is usually two or three days. This is our platform that we develop and we share with people, healthcare workers of 50 countries, which is called the INIC surveillance online system. With this uh, uh, online platform, we have published more than 300 publications and we won 10 international awards for our outcomes. And this is something key. This software or another software, but you must have infection prevention to reduce bacterial system. On the other hand, okay. On the other hand, according to using this system, we also have immediately in seconds the pie showing the microorganism profile per site. You can see here the microorganism profile of plasma infections of one hospital. Of course, I cannot share the name of the hospital, but you see in this slide that Klebsiella, Acinetobacter, and Pseudomonas, and E. coli 
represent more than 80% of the microorganisms of plasma infection of this particular hospital. And this is what we need to do, you need to know. What is the meaning of this slide? You don't use, do you don't need to use vancomycin as empirical treatment because the staph aureus is not prevalent. And this is what you need to conduct. Okay, conclusions, and we are closing my, my speech. I have two slides for conclusions. The available evidence is not a lot because these two meta-analyses analyzed more than 20,000 papers and they found around 25 well-designed papers. We have a challenge of the bacterial resistance that only 25 papers were well-designed. It's not a lot. Those meta-analyses, on the other hand, didn't include key interventions such as avoid antibiotics on viral infections, viral infections, improve surgical prophylaxis. I remember one excellent paper published in the late 80s showing what is good to know and to do for surgical prophylaxis. This was not included in the meta-analysis. Reduce HAI rates by infection prevention programs. Even not included in the meta-analysis, they are, they are key interventions. The proper management of endomycobalamin has an effect on reducing use of antibiotics, length of stay, and cost. No one study showed that you increase the mortality by applying the endomycobalamin scholarship. It also has a positive effect, according to the second meta analysis, on reducing MRSA, immune resistant pseudomonas, and ESBL plexiella, which is really important. Some key recommendations from one ID specialist as myself, always apply empirical treatment according to the guidelines. And these guidelines need to be updated with the local information of your hospital based on your epidemiology. Antibiotic prophylaxis should last one dose, maybe one day, with the exception of open heart procedures. In this case, it could be 48 hours. Avoid treatment with antibiotics of viral infections. De-escalation of treatment based on the cultures. Please always take cultures before starting with antibiotics. And if you wish to take a culture of uh, one wound, never use the swab. Always use a needle because if you use the swab and you take the surface, this will be showing contamination instead of the real infection. Of course, you can have a mix of contamination and real infection, but using a needle after skin antisepsis, going deep, you will find the real pathogen of this infection. De-escalation is key, as we said. Implement infective prevention programs in order to reduce HAI, and then when you don't have HAI, of course, you don't have a viral system, and the list of restricted antibiotics also show some effectiveness. And that will be all. Thank you, uh, Dr. Victor Rosenthal, for your excellent deliberation on global situation of antimicrobial resistance, as well as the global perspective of antimicrobial stewardship. Uh, I think I have received only two questions as of now, one from Dr. Shashank, uh, however, most of the questions, I think both the questions, I felt that it will be answered in the subsequent sessions. However, I just would like to ask you that Dr. Sashank has got a question. Shouldn't we base uh, any empirical therapy based on local antibiogram? Common question. Uh, I think uh, this will be answered by the subsequent speakers. But sir, if you want to put one or two um, words on it. Yes, of course. If I if I understood well, you said if we should uh, start with empirical treatment based on our antibiogram. Yes, of course. You need to have that. This is key. Uh, you need to have your microorganism profile and then the antibiogram. With the antibiogram, you guide your empirical treatment. And then after two or three days, when you have the results, you go to the de-escalation. Okay, the, another question was made by, uh, given by Dr. Dhruv. Uh, he has asked that in pediatric present uh, uh, setup, in pediatric, uh, pediatric setup, there is a challenges 
a lot of challenges and particularly challenges in the pedi pediatric critical areas. Uh, so what is suggested uh, by panel, which uh, strategy should be adopted in case of pediatric uh, critical care units? Child uh, critical what, care. You mean what uh, imperial demon you use? You should use for pediatric. That is what that is what he he is asking. What what kind of strategy should be taken? No, the, the, the main difference with pediatrics is that if they are uh, very young, you should avoid uh, quinolones because they have an effect on, on joints of pediatric population. But other than that, it's the same of adult population. Uh, of course, uh, the pediatric population has more viral infections compared with adult population. But if we are speaking about healthcare acquired uh, infection, it is exactly the same. You need to base your empirical treatment on the uh, microorganism profile and antibiogram. And avoid quinolones because they damage the joint. Right. Uh, somebody called Brito uh, L uh, has asked a question How do we measure reduction in mortality based on ASP uh, implementation? How we measure reduction in mortality? Yeah. Okay, it's a good question. You know, uh, it's uh, pretty easy. You need to have a cohort of patients. Uh, you need to measure the denominator and the numerator. And the uh, denominator shall be stratified by kind of devices. And the numerator shall be stratified by kind of infection. For example, you need to have uh, on, on one month, one period, uh, your rate of uh, infection and the rate of mortality of this period. And then after the intervention, the rate of infection and the rate of mortality of the other period. Uh, to improve the uh, accuracy of the attributable mortality, there are uh, nine strategies. Uh, the, the best of them is uh, matching patients by at least five features, which is uh, age, gender, uh, hospital, ICU, uh, months of stay. And after you match by these features, you can analyze the extra mortality independently of the underlying disease and uh, initial risk factor. Uh, we'll end up over here. Thank you very much, Dr. Victor Rosenthal. We are indeed uh, honored with your presence over here.